Hi there, it's Bob Chu again from Stewart Boatworks. Uh, here on board another wonderful 27 Stewart that we are just now finishing in time to uh, deliver to the Upper Keys. A um, couple years back, seven years ago actually, I was running a different boat company and built a, a real custom sailfish boat for this particular customer and a year ago he approached me about a 27 Stewart for the same purpose. It's exclusively a sailfish boat. He doesn't keep any fish. Uh, the only fish that will ever be on the boat are typically live ballyhoo um, in his live well. So here he had, he had his chance with this brand, of course, with Stewart to have that flush floor. And that's what's so key to, uh, you know, so many of these boats we seem to be building now, more and more flush floor boats, because it's fairly uncommon in a 27-foot boat. So flush floor, fish box below, two inches of insulation. You've heard a lot of this before if you've been following our videos. Uh, frigid rigid coffin box on top. Um, you know, electric actuator to open it. Rod holders all the way around, flush rod holders. He went with the Fotik tow rail. And as you'll see in a little bit here, Fotik helm pod. Also this color, it's a little deceiving inside. It's now dark outside and this boat will be detailed tomorrow and delivered the following day. Um, but this boat is blue tone white. It is not ice blue that we do so many of. So it's one shade lighter, uh, just beautiful color. Uh, this customer is all about simplicity to, a, to an extent. So you will see as we progress in the boat, There'll be some items where you'll say, well, that's not that simplistic, but again, for his sole purpose of live baiting for sailfish, it all makes sense. So a feature you've seen before on our boats is this awesome six tray tackle storage area, lockable, almost becoming a standard item. We do so many of them. Um, hard enclosure, likewise. Uh, this was relatively rare about two years ago on our boats, and now I dare say at least half the boats are getting them. Um, so hard enclosure with a vent up top uh, so as to let some air flow during the summer in particular. The helm, of course, this is something if you've seen our videos before, we've got the Fotik helm pod, the custom uh, mount it helm itself that's underside mount it with stainless hardware up here old school look I mean really a lot about this boat as well as a lot of our boats but this boat in particular is that it, it's kind of like a throwback in a lot of ways um, so yeah Edson wheel satin finish C-Zone digital switching which you're familiar with uh, Garmin VHF external speaker for the Garmin JO Audio Head, Yamaha 7-inch gauge. Now, something new. This is the first Stewart Boatworks or Isla Mirada, which we also build, um, that has the new Yamaha controls. So you have a, simply have a key fob, power button, of course your battery switch is below, start and stop, and the new controls. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's that next stage, and you'll start seeing some more changes from Yamaha, such as electric steering and things of that nature. But this is the very first boat that we've gone to this rigging system, and all future boats will have this as well. Um, then we run over and it has the uh, Sea Star steering. A few mosquitoes out here as well. <laughs> um, Lenco trim tabs with indicators. Forgot to highlight the 8616 Garmin's. And then of course, our bifold door with all the really nice, neat, clean rigging for all items. Literally everything other than the batteries in the C-Zone panel. And of course, hidden fasteners. Everybody's tired of hearing me say that, probably, but 
It's all part of the clean look. Why do you want to stare at screw heads if you don't have to? So uh, at this point, we'll talk a little bit about the live well next, but I wanted to bring you over to this side of the boat um, to show you something that we touched base on last week. Uh, it's a little different. Seakeeper, Seakeeper number one, size number one. We ran this today, uh, just awesome. Again, I'd like to point out that of all the boats in this size range, whether it's our 23 or 27, we are probably the last boat on the water that has an issue. We have no quick whip effect beam in a beam C. This boat is very predictable motion. Um, however, on occasion, this is the third sea keeper we've done. In this case, this gentleman's wife, and the two of them fish together almost exclusively, she gets deathly seasick. So all of the bigger boats he's had, had a sea keeper in it. He was in need of that here. So we accommodated his wishes. Sea keeper one, and as I had said in our little short video that we had done on this while this whole process was the built, boat was being built. Um, we will have a two piece uh, Lexan cover, three quarter inch thick cover over this so that he'll be able to put buckets in there and kite rods and kites and things of that nature. In other words, give him a flush surface for storage so he doesn't give up all of his storage. <laughs> we, we, uh, we have that coming tomorrow, and we just only had this uh, this evening to do this video. So it will be, I'll probably get a picture of it and pass that along when, when we get that installed tomorrow. But awesome thing. Yeah, we went out, it wasn't rough, but we went out to the inlet, turned sideways. You know, it was a foot, and there was a bigger swell occasional. Um, but even with that, I was in the second station and purposely trying to get the boat to rock back and forth and once we got enough motion in it went ahead and initialized and and started the sea keeper one and literally within seconds boom stopped boat sitting still so there's no doubt in a rougher day it would be even more noticeable but even today as calm as it was that would be a huge benefit for somebody that tends to get seasick so now up in the second station, um, this is a fully complete second station. It's got a 10 inch Garmin, Lenko trim tabs with indicators, Yamaha five inch gauge, uh, the Seastar steering display, another Garmin 315 VHF, the uh, Edson blacked out wheel, um, and the Yamaha new binnacles. In addition, of course, it has on the back side, which you can't see, the start-stop switches um, and also the kill switch. One of the cool things about this particular boat is that this customer wanted to have nav lights inside of the hard top as opposed to inside the hull. So it's the first one we've done. Um, they're very high quality lights. We accommodated them. It's, uh, I think it's a really clean look, um, so we can do that. Uh, in addition, what's just cool about this boat, while the boat is blue tone white, he did choose to have this blacked out up here. So we did the, the black wheel, we did black powder coating on the belly band and the rod holders, the black gem 22 foot outriggers and black VHF and stereo antennas. So it, you know, it cuts down on the reflection on the second station so when you're up here, it's, you know, it's a little more you know, subtle and, and stealth. So we get to the Leaning Post Live Well, which if you've seen other videos, you know we do a lot of these. It's a 40 gallon Leaning Post Live Well. Has many, many features, folding footrest in the front, storage under the cushion, two small tackle lockers on both sides, uh, four rod holders across the back, the drink holders, little rigging station, a fixed backrest, nice handrail on the backside. All that stuff's really cool. So what's different about this one? This one is our first pressurized version of the 40 gallon leaning post live well. 
So we went to two latches to get it pressurized, which is definitely beneficial. Um, and we went to a different, it's difficult to show you, but we went to a different uh, feed system, a different drain system. Um, it's so it's so well thought through, I believe, so that you can actually tailor the amount of water draining out of the bottom. You can tailor the amount of water coming in. There's also a top drain and by opening this tackle drawer locker and throwing a couple tabs, you can get in there to another handle which allows you to tailor the amount of flow from the outer drain. So you can really dial this in. Uh, it's really, really cool application. Uh, first one we've done, as I said. The next thing was he wanted more live bait capacity and other than he was not interested in the front seat, um, which is one of our typical live well applications, he wanted a live well in the floor. We've had several people talk to us about this, but nobody's really said, yes, go ahead and let's do it. So um, you will see here, we actually took our hatch and we went ahead and modified it with a piano hinge, which allows this hatch now to open all the way even with the gem latch in the open position, it doesn't make contact with the live well. Gas shock and a 30 gallon live well in the floor. Oval shape, also pressurized. Um, this has a feed that you can adjust, an upper drain, as well as the drain that you can adjust in the bottom of the well. Really, really cool. So, I mean, legitimately, 70 gallons of live bait here between these two live wells, both pressurized. So we come to another unique feature, but as I came down here to show you this, I saw all the rod holders in the boat. And of course, you've probably all seen, if you look at serious offshore boats, some of them just go crazy loading the gunnels up with rod holders. So we didn't go that far, but this boat, as I'm looking around, has um, I think there's about 14 rod holders in here, 16, something like that, in the gunnels. So totally functional, uh, exact rod holders that he wanted, exact location, what angle the rod holder is, either 0, 15, or 30 degrees. And they're all gem rod holders with the fastener on the underside, which we can do because of the three-piece construction of the boat. So that being said, the reason really I, why I really got down here was to show you these compartments, as you know, can be um, rod lockers, standard, or can be insulated fish boxes. This customer, because he uses a lot of rods and some kite rods, he's opted for us to finish this off with C-Deck. So although this is a four-foot opening to the, fit, to the storage compartment in this case, or a fish box, but in this case storage, the C-Deck runs eight feet so that he can put his biggest, his longest rods, seven and a half feet, and they can sit on the bottom in the hull. Then in addition to that, we have the standard rod racks, which uh, support four rods up above whatever you have down below. So you put gaffs and boat hooks and deck brushes and whatever you can think of, cast nets, so on and so forth. But above that, suspend four rods and they can be more typically they're heavier offshore spinning rods they can be fly rods um, it, of course it's 10 feet long the compartment so yeah you could put nine foot fly rods in there as well so if you look at the amount of storage in this locker and then duplicate it on the other side he can really store a lot of rods comfortably and securely uh, lockable if you desire in his case he didn't necessarily want that um, but more importantly, doesn't have to haul him in and out of the boat every time he uses the boat. Periodically, of course, he's going to pull them out and service them. But I think this is a really cool solution and nobody's had us do it before. So you've seen this before, I'm sure. This is the removable stern seat. Backrest goes down into two rod holders. You can pull that out, oscillate the arms, put it storage down below. Here, these legs flip up. Pull the pins if you want, take it completely out of the boat, or let it just swing down 
to the transom. In this case, I have the legs down to show you the bilge, and this is how you would access it with the seat in place. Lift that up just high enough and lower it back down so it holds the bilge hatch. And you'll see something we've not done before, and I alluded to this before as well, which is uh, in a short video, which is a three-pump sea chest. Again, a request to this customer, um, our first. The way it's plumbed is that one of the pumps feeds the main leaning post live well. The secondary pump feeds the in-floor live well. The third pump, which is secured closed, is a backup pump. It's in the center so that if either of the other pumps fails, that he can simply cut the tie wrap that's holding the handle closed, um, take the hose off with two hose clamps, and move it over to the center pump. Push it back on, tighten the hose clamps, open the valve, throw on the pump. Now that pump's gonna feed whichever live well had the failed pump with it. Really neat system. Um, so other than that, we, you know, we have our typical, like you can get to the fuel filters, I can see them right there. Um, you can get to, I see the transducer, 1,000 watt chirp transducer. Um, also, for the sea keeper, um, it is salt water uh, cooled. Well, it's fresh water cooled, but it needs fresh salt water cooling to it. And so I can see the seacock handle for the hose that leads to the sea keeper. The two bilge pumps, one mounted higher than the other, acts as a high water alarm with digital switches for the, for the uh, floats. Uh, and one diaphragm pump to drain the in-floor live well at the end of the day, if the boat's staying in the water. Um, so there you go, that's uh, bilge itself will get, you know, this is not detailed, we're finishing out the bilge tomorrow, but it makes this uh, really functional exactly what he wanted, and, and it's cool because, again, we, we haven't done pressurized live wells, we haven't done an in-the-sole live well, we haven't done a sea chest, and we haven't done a sea keeper one. Um, so, really, you know, we can, we can build what you want, and I know this customer is going to be happy as can be. So, if you've got ideas and, and thoughts, or you just like this boat and would like one like it, we can make it happen. So, uh, give us a call at Stewart Boatworks. Thank you very much. So I'm sorry, but I have to add a PS to this video. Uh, power, twin 300 Yamahas. Now, I'm, I'm always in this conversation with prospective buyers. We've run this boat and sold this boat with a single 300, and it performs perfectly fine. You've seen the video probably where one of these is trimmed out of the water, and this boat will run close to 40 miles an hour on a single 300 with the other one trimmed out of the water. I mean, it's insane. Um, but some people, rather than twin 200s, maybe even twin 150s, we've done several of those, uh, they want max power, and that's twin 300s. So this boat, today we ran it, and the boat ran in the high 50s. Didn't quite see 60, but that's okay too. Um, plenty of fuel on board, and really, uh, you know, it's that strong cruise, this boat can cruise at 40 miles an hour effortlessly. So. Uh, but what I wanted to point out, which was really interesting about this, was with the Sea Keeper and the two additional um, Group 31 glass mat batteries for the Sea Keeper, that's an additional 550 pounds. And it, as you saw, it's in the console. Well, you probably heard me talk enough over the videos that how easily our boats come on plane with the trim tabs all the way up and that single engine sample really proves that fact with either a single engine or one trimmed out of the water but we get a very little bow lift coming on plane never lose horizon at five foot eight never lose horizon whatsoever uh, but with the sea keeper that 550 pounds inside the console it's pretty interesting this boat was virtually instantly on plane as soon as i applied the throttles and yet it's still maintained a very proper running attitude 
all the way down at slower speeds. These boats stay on plane in the low 20s, high teens without using the trim tabs. Uh, so it's hugely beneficial when it's rough out. Um, but point being that it kind of brought it on plane even quicker than normal, even though it's an additional 550 pounds. So it's really cool. Uh, great application. Just wanted to mention it as long as we're talking about the power. Thanks again, and we'd love to build you a boat whenever it works for you. Thank you.